there's a few threads to my story, uh, and I'll touch on each, and maybe we can dig into the others. Um, firstly, I have a background as a lawyer. Uh, so uh, rules, uh, regulations, laws, how they come together to build our societies and our economies. These are the things that I studied, uh, that I saw the practice of, um, and I saw the different ways that they are evolving. Um, governance is the other piece uh, that relates to rules, and that's something that is, in this particular moment, um, of a special significance, I think, because we've got this underlying technology uh, potential with distributed ledgers. Um, the third thing is my, my personal background. I am the product of many migrations. Uh, my uh, family ethnicity is Chinese. Uh, I was born and brought up in England, uh, and I uh, have spent the last seven years here in the US. And in each of these three different cultures, there's a different conception of what society and culture and laws mean. And I think as we start to encode those laws and those cultures into the, uh, the, the code of our society and how the digital economy and digital identity works, I think these differences and the ways that we can think about how they can harmonize in a, in a truly global world uh, are one of the most important things that we can think about right now. So the Stanford program that I'm part of is called uh, the Stanford Center for Legal Informatics. Um, it really grew out of uh, the, the larger program for law, science, and technology where I took my master's degree at Stanford. Uh, but it really focuses upon this intersection between uh, law and computer science. We've got two tremendous schools at Stanford uh, in the Department of Engineering and the Computer Science Department in particular, and the law school, uh, which uh, Dean Larry Kramer put onto the quarter system just before I did my master's. And so that, for me, allowed me to really see the way in which Stanford creates this interdisciplinary network. The law school, for the first time, was kind of coming into and in sync with the rest of the, the university. And so I benefited from that. Uh, and one of, those, uh, uh, one of those broader, I think, advantages, there's this interdisciplinary network of centers that you see. At Codex, we uh, have this particular interest in the way that information systems and information systems theory apply to the legal system, which is really uh, one big information system in and of itself. Um, and so this uh, center has for a while thought about uh, areas where the two come together, in particular computational law and the way that uh, as a uh, set of uh, codes, uh, we're, we're, we're seeing software and contracts and software and regulations starting to overlap. And I think um, as part of that, we in particular looked into the, the potential for this upsurgence of uh, distributed ledgers, blockchains, and through that we've been able to bring together uh, a broader community around this particular center. Uh, and so I think from the workshops, we're hoping to see uh, more of that kind of interdisciplinary community building and ecosystem building um, around this, this core of uh, thinking of, at the intersection of code and, and, and regulation. So for me, the Distributed Ledger Foundation represents uh, a, another step up from what we were doing at Codex. Uh, Codex was uh, conceived of as this uh, neutral convening uh, body. Uh, the Distributed Ledger Foundation, in a sense, uh, is this uh, meta layer which uh, is really looking at a specific set of technologies, but doing so at this global level in a, in a very uh, neutral convening manner uh, in an area which is, at the moment, still striving to develop some of these standards and some of these approaches to meshing together. Um, so for me, the Distributed Ledger Foundation represented one of these, um, I think, interoperability catalysts uh, in, in, in a world where there's an innate sense of the ethos of wanting to work together, um, and yet they hadn't developed yet a, 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 an institution or a convening uh, center of gravity that was really making that happen. So. Um, uh, the, other, the other main piece of why I was so excited was just the, uh, the, the provenance of the Distributed Ledger Foundation and, and the people involved. And so having seen and, and admired what had happened with the Open Identity Foundation and the Open Identity Exchange, the prospect of having that same kind of center of gravity and the processes and the credibility and the openness with which that was created embedded within a, 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 a new nonprofit, uh, publicly interested organization was, was incredibly appealing. So I think what we saw in Palo Alto was that uh, it's, it's, it's really interesting when you can bring together faculty and 
researchers and, and practitioners from a variety of different backgrounds. We had folks from the Stanford Complexity Group. We had a professor who was uh, actually in synthetic biology, and yet he taught a bioengineering class around blockchain uh, and, and its potential uh, opportunities from the perspective of his sort of research into complex biological processes. And yet the ways in which the rules of biology worked could in a sense be compared to the ways in which these emerging uh, distributed ledger ecosystems could work. And so I, I think that hopefully some of that interdisciplinary ethos and the uh, different ways of looking at some of the issues involved will, will, will be picked up by uh, the efforts in London and, and Singapore and Amsterdam and, and, and Sydney this year. Um, and then the other key piece that I hope to be able to continue on from this is just the bridge that we're trying to build between the legal profession, which has traditionally been that body entrusted with rulemaking, rule interpreting, and, and, and shaping of these systems for, for coexistence that we've created, really bring them into the conversation in, in ways that are uh, both creative and recognizing that the challenges that they have to deal with, but trying to present the underlying technology not as this sort of magical, uh, unknowable thing, but really in terms of the features and the challenges that are presented by those technologies, but also the business opportunities and the, the public interest opportunities of deploying these, and therefore engaging the legal profession around really what is possible. I think one of the key things that we've been thinking about when it comes to the noise and the, the level of um, uncertainty around the space is that uh, because in some senses there's a, uh, there's a, there's a much broader uh, uncertainty around trust that's happening in the, in the broader uh, milieu of, of media and society and politics. And so I think on a very meta level, what the Distributed Ledger Foundation can represent is a new kind of trust. It's a new kind of uh, way of building consensus and building um, a belief in an institution, but not an institution that's run in the traditional sense, but an institution that's run in a much more fairly governed sense. And I think that's the difference in terms of how we need to think about what it means to be an institution going forwards. I think it's about how we can transparently and fairly allow for governance and decision making to happen at the points where those decisions are most well affected. I think it's doing it in an open manner and in a way that recognizes subsidiarity in the sense that local decisions are, are best made uh, uh, where there is sort of that local understanding. And, and, and that inclusivity and that openness around how uh, an organization like the Distributed Ledger Foundation can set itself up and then create standards around how these rules can flow down for other organizations that are looking to build similar kinds of legitimacy and trust. I think that is the key for what a distributed ledger foundation can create. And that flows down into all the protocols and the standards that it's trying to bring together around identity and governance and smart contracts and these core components of what can really be this larger system for redefining what trust can be in the 21st century. My company is called Legal.io and one of the premises that we've built it around is this notion of community and subsidiarity. Um, community in the sense that we try and build uh, a lot of the elements of what the Distributed Ledger Foundation represents in terms of uh, governance and identity and standards, uh, build those in at the community level. Uh, and subsidiarity represents we're trying to uh, recognize that these decisions are best made at the local level. Uh, so what we've been able to create is a set of uh, systems and protocols and, and technology platforms that allow the legal profession to adopt these kinds of approaches in governing themselves and setting up their own networks uh, in order to provide greater help in this, uh, in, in this new economy of people reaching out online. Uh, the, at the core of it, there's a digital identity for the legal profession uh, that we uh, allow the different trusted institutions within our uh, broader ecosystem to, 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 to be oracles for, to really back up. And so we work with bar associations and regulators as well as law firms and nonprofits, and we really want them to help to embed the trust within these identities that lawyers then will be able to take around and plug in wherever they can be best of service.